Hi, my name is Paul from Physic High, and today I would like to give you an overview of Module 5 Advanced Mechanics, and in particular the third inquiry question which deals with gravitation. Now, I am not going to give you a full detailed description of everything that's involved in Module 5. It's meant to be an overview so that you can highlight some of the key points that you need to remember and also some tips in terms of how to succeed in any future exam. I have lots of videos that go into each of the concepts at a greater detail, so I encourage you to have a look at those and you can find them on my website or on YouTube, of course. A quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now let's get started. Now module five is broken down into three distinct inquiry questions. Now the first inquiry question that you're going to be looking at is how are models that are used to explain projectile motion be used to analyze and make predictions? Now I'm gonna simplify it by simply writing projectile motion. Obviously, if I write the full inquiry question, I'm running out of space. The second inquiry question says, why do objects move in circles? And the final inquiry question states, how does the force of gravity determine the motion of planets and satellites? And I'm going to simplify it by just simply writing gravity. The first aspect of gravity we understand is the Newtonian idea of the law of gravity. Now, the law of gravity, of course, is Isaac Newton's understanding or description of how gravity works. That is a force that exists between two masses and where the force that exists is proportional to the product of the masses and indirectly proportional to the distance between them squared. Now appreciate the fact that what Isaac Newton did was a description of gravity and it's a model that describes gravity as a force but he did not seek out or did not understand why gravity actually occurs. That was left to Albert Einstein in the early part of the 20th century when he published his general theory of relativity, which gave us an understanding of gravity, not in terms of a force, but in terms of a distortion of space-time. That's definitely beyond the scope of the course, but I want to make the point that here is a model of gravity that has limitations. Now, the law of gravity, which I just discussed, leads us onto a number of other key aspects that the syllabus looks at. The first is Kepler's laws of motion. And when we look at Kepler's laws of motion, we particularly are interested in the fact that the path of the planets around the sun are not circular, they are actually elliptical. Also, that the velocity that they have, or the rate of motion angular-wise, is determined by how far they are. They move slower when they're further away from the central mass and faster when they move closer to the central mass. And then now that leads us into the third Kepler law, which says that the ratio between the displacement or the radius cubed over the period squared is a constant value. And it was Isaac Newton's understanding of the law of gravity that allows us to work out that that K equals GM over four pi squared. And so you need to know that particular mathematical formula. In fact, it's provided for you in the formula sheet and allows you to solve various problems, the problems related to RT and the mass of the central object. And this mathematical model is perfect to understand purely circular motion. And you'll see because this relates to circular motion, it ties back to our second inquiry question. The other aspect of examining in the syllabus is the concept of orbital velocity. And that allows you to work out the fact that the orbital velocity of an object undergoing circular motion, because the circular motion means we have a centripetal force, which is provided by the gravitational force as Newton described it, and allows us to get us the formula, which equals this particular formula here. So here we are analyzing motion of planets and satellites by using Kepler's laws and by using an mechanical analysis using the laws of gravitation. We then move on to the idea of what is a gravitational field. In other words, it's an area of space where an object with a certain property experiences a force. And in this case, we have the concept of a gravitational field. An object with mass has a field around it, which of course we use a particular diagram in order to analyze that particular field. So it's often drawn like so, very roughly in my case. I want to make a point here, but by the way, we are using models again. We've got mathematical models here that explain the motions of 
planets and satellites around objects. And over here, we have a diagrammatic model, which is a representation in this case of a field. We don't see the arrows, but we do use those arrows to understand what forces are exerted on objects within that field. And then that finally leads us to the concept of energy. And that's, of course, divided up into two areas, the idea of the gravitational energy and secondly, the kinetic energy. The gravitational energy, of course, is not equal to mgh anymore because that assumes that g is constant. And we now know through our understanding of gravity that g gets weaker as we move away. And so as a result, you develop a new formula for the strength of the gravitational potential energy. And so that also then encompasses of, well, how can we understand the total energy of an object? Now, in this case, we may incorporate the idea of escape velocity. In other words, what is the velocity required for an object to escape the gravitational field? And then also, if we have, sets, let's say, satellites in orbit, we already discussed that the velocity changes and also the distance from its central mass changes, which means both the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy changes. Well, how does that combine when we look at the total energy of the object in orbit? And so that encompasses our understanding of gravity. So lastly, I want to say, what is my big tip? Well, my big tip here is derive. What do I mean? Well, I've just given you two mathematical formulas over here, and there is an expectation that you know the fundamental principles behind those formulas. In other words, how did this formula come about? Know how to derive it. Now, in this case, this particular formula is actually given into the formula sheet, but I encourage you to know the principles that exist behind it that allow you to develop that formula. This particular formula is not given the formula sheet, but it is basically a derivation from understanding that an object going in a circular motion that is a centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force at that particular distance. And so therefore, you can rearrange that to work out the orbital velocity at that particular point. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.